Double thought he had me, then I scream, scream. Double thought he had me, then I scream, scream. Yeah, yo, hey, hey. Ain't no weapons formed against me, gonna prosper. Ain't no weapon. Plenty of angels round me, packing like some mobsters. So he says, why is it black people can't forgive each other? Because we, we are in Brixton, we see so much knife crime, we're fed up of it. Our own people killing each other, stabbing each other, mothers crying, right, fathers crying. Why is it there is so much black and black crime? Don't you know that this is in the Bible? I'm going to show you why this happens. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 54. Read that for me, please. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 54. Listen to what God says. Read. So that the man that is tender... Jump up. Get me the verse. 53. 53. Come on. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 and verse 53. Why is there black and black crime? Why is there knife crime? Read. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. God says because we brought the commandments, we are the children of Israel that come out of the slave trade. They need to understand this, right? So because we as the Jews, God's special people, we broke his commandments, curses took hold of us. We're no longer that, re that regal people who followed God's law. So in the prophecy to Moses, God told Moses to tell the Israelites that this is going to happen. Read it again, read. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. We are going to eat our children. The fruit of our body is our children. In captivity, we're going to eat each other. Watch this, read. The flesh of thy son. Come on. And thy daughters, and your daughters, come on. Which the Lord thy God have given thee. Watch this word, listen. Which the Lord thy God have given thee, read, in the siege. Come on. And in the strengthness. So when we catch in hell in captivity, we're going to eat each other. That happened in 70 AD, and it happened in Babylon, it happened in Greece, it happened in Rome, and it's going to happen again towards the latter end of Jacob's trouble. Watch this, read. Wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. Our enemies, these nations God send against us. The Portuguese is our enemy. The French, the British, all these governments of the earth have the children of Israel in captivity. Read, watch this. So that the man that is... Pardon, slack it. So that the man that is tender among you, so that the man that is tender amongst you, that's a curse to the Israelites, read, and very delicate, and very delicate, come on, his eyes, shall his what, his eye, his, his eye, eye, read, shall be evil toward his brother. There you go, that is why there's black and black crime, because we break God's law. Therefore, God says, as a punishment, you're going to hate each other. You're going to look at your brother and you're going to lust after everything that he has. You're going to murder him, right? You're going to trouble his house. You're going to see his daughter, and you're going to want to take her, right? You're going to want to rape his daughter. That Those things thrive in the black community. Stabbing each other up, right? T um, being a thief is because we are, we are testifying that we are the people that was given laws but don't keep it. That is why we, 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 we go off, we err in our thoughts. You understand? That is the reason, so it's an excellent question. Why is there black and black crime? Why black people hate black people? It's because we go off from our God. Therefore, God says, these things will take us up. We'll start looking at each other with sideways. As you see your brother in a new Nike, you don't want to work to buy your Nike. What do you do? You lay wait and rob him. You want to get rich quick and die trying. Right? right? You want to be that criminal on TV and Hollywood. You want to keep, you want to keep up with the Joneses. Right? You don't want to labor with your hands. But th these are the curses that will take up the children of Israel. That is what God is showing you. That is why so many of you young people, you die so young. You're packed up in the prisons. Right? Because you don't want to work. You want a Hollywood lifestyle. Right? You young people, you don't want to follow God's law. You care about how you look, you're caught up in social media. How you look, right? You like the Facebook and the anti-social media. And you like the TikTok and the immorality. Right? First, first Corinthians 6 and 9. Right? That is what you like. And you're enticed by the folly. You're enticed by the sin. And many of you older ones, you don't bring your children up in the fear of God. So you allow them to be wretched. Matter of fact, give me Psalm 78 more please, right? Psalm 78. Because all the young people that is that is hearing my voice, if you don't follow God's law, God is gonna kill you. Right? God is gonna cut you off because God is no respect to our persons. Why are you killing your brother? Why are you lay waiting your brother in school and knife him up? Why are you stabbing him up? Right? Why are you making a mother's stomach burn? That's what God is saying. Watch this, read. Psalm 78, more please, and verse 1. Watch this. Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 1. I think these are the Psalms. Psalms are prophecy. Get out of the Christian mindset. You only read a Psalm to feel good. 
Right, many of you from Jamaica, anytime you catch an L, you pull a psalm to feel good. But the psalms are prophecy. Right, the psalms tell you what's going to happen. Watch this, read. Hear, give ear, O oh my people. Give ear, all oh my people, which are the children of Israel, the Israelites. Read. To my law. To my what? To my law. You must give ear to God's law, to the scriptures, to the commandments. Read. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Incline your ears to the word of God mouth. As you pass, sister, listen to the word of God. Hearken to the voice of the Almighty. Many of you want to hear a thunderous voice out of heaven now, and then you claim you would listen. But my voice is the voice of God. I am the voice crying out in the wilderness, making straight path for the children of God. But will you hear? You Jamaicans, will you hear? You Barbadians, will you hear? You in the diasporans, will you hear? Watch this read. I will open my mouth in a parable. God says, I'm going to open up my mouth in a riddle, in a dark saying, a dark sentence. I'm going to show you things in parables, in similitudes. Watch this read. I will utter dark sayings of old. I'm going to utter the things what that were told from the beginning to Adam, to Seth, to Enoch, to Lamech, to Noah, down to Jacob, down to the prophets. God showed them in a parable. God says, I'm going to bring it, I'm going to show you that the understanding of the parables and the riddles to Christ. Watch this read. Which we have heard and know. Those parables and those laws which you have heard and know. Come on, read. And our fathers have told us. Come on. We will not hide them from their children. Many of you have children, but you don't want to bring your children up in the scriptures. So your children are left to be idle. They're left to be murderers and gangbangers and pimps. Running around with more than one. Right, can't be satisfied. Right, becoming whores and drug dealers. Right, love to kill. Right, love to lust. Love to become vicious. Right, God says you must not hide it from your children. Watch this, read. Show it to the generation to come. You must show the generation to come, mommy. Show your daughters how to be godly. Tell your daughters, don't become a man. Don't become masculine. Take the trousers off. Leave the lesbian lifestyle alone. Leave the abomination alone. Right, come back to the righteous statutes of God. Telling your sons, listen, take the dress off. Right? Stop being effeminate. Stop bleaching out your skin. That's what God says. We need to tell our young men to be righteous. Right? Pick up the Bible. Take your pants from down your bottom. It's a shame. It's not a fashion. God says it's whoredom. It's idolatry. It's harlotry. We can't have men showing you behind and thinking that's a fashion. That is nasty. Right? This is what the world gives you. Watch this, read. Show it to the generation to come. We're going to show the generation to come. Watch this, read. The praise of the Lord. The praise of God. Right? Read. And his strength. And his what? And his strength. And his strength. Read. And his wonderful works. And his wonderful works. Psalm 119 and verse 9, come on, please. Right? we got to tell our children that they must be in order. Right? we got to tell the teenagers that you must be in order according to God's word. Right? right? You can't be wicked. Psalm 119 and verse 9. You can't be wicked. You can't be ungodly. Right? Sisters, you gotta take a man and marry. Right? You can't marry woman and man to man. That is abomination to God. Right? Sisters, take the pants off. Stop dressing provocatively. Stop causing your brother to lust. Right? And lose his mind. Because why? You're dressing ungodly. You're showing flesh. And you think that by showing flesh, you will entice a man. No, you're going to entice a pimp. You're going to entice a man beater, a wife beater. That is who you're going to entice. Put a dress on, right? And look modest and look godly. Watch this, read. Psalm. Psalms 119 and verse 1. Psalm 119 and verse 9. Verse 9. Read. Psalm 119 and verse 9. Come on. Where we flow, shall a young man cleanse his way? How is your son's going to cleanse his way? How is your daughter going to cleanse his way, sir? How are your daughters going to learn? How is your young son's going to learn? Read. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. They must take heed according to God's word. God's law. That is how they're going to learn. You're going to teach your teenage children God's law. 
not to celebrate Christmas, not to eat pork and shrimp and lobster and what the world calls delicacies. Those things are abomination is killing you. That's why in the black community you have so much diabetes, you have so much cardiac problems, you have so much uh, osteoporosis, you have so much disease of the lungs, you have worm living in your brains. It's because you're eating ungodly foods. Right? You're doing the things God tells you not to do. In the Caribbean, you're struggling with high blood pressure because you're eating filth, you're eating the pig, you're eating swine, you're eating what your enemy has taught you to eat and to love. That is why you're dying. That is why you, you have to depend upon high blood pressure medication. Right? That is why you're sick in your 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 droves in the hospitals. That is why your young children right now, they're dying at a fast rate. The lifespan has been cut down. It's because you're partaking in ungodly custom, ungodly delicacies, the diet of the heathen. You're a royal people, a holy people. Yes. Watch this, read. With my whole heart have I sought thee. You see that, sir? We need to seek God with our whole heart. Your heart is your mind. You gotta put God in your mind. You gotta get the white man out your mind. And when I say the white man, I'm not trying to be racist. I'm talking about the ideologies that's been taught to you by him. All the customs that come with this image. This is the, this is the image of the devil. This is not the Christ of the Bible. Many of you people, you have this on your walls. Right? Coming from the Caribbean, you have this on your calendar. Right? You put this up in your house and think this is Christ. This is not Jesus, mommy. This is not Jesus. Christ was a man of color like you. Like me. With woolly hair like you. Right? You're learning lies. Everything you see on here, this is this is our life. This is wrong. This is your enemy. This is who took us down. This is Edom. Right? This is the chief devil in the Bible. He's in the street of Cain. Right? So we gotta come back to the scriptures and learn what God says. What does Christ look like? People say it doesn't matter. It does matter. If it's truth, it matters. Shouldn't you stand for truth? Huh? If you don't stand for truth, you're gonna fall for lies. You're gonna fall for illusion. Right? Gonna lead to confusion. And you're doomed. So it does matter what Christ look like. It does matter that he look like you. Why is it somebody lie to you and tell you Christ look white if it wasn't important? If it wasn't important for you to know. They lied to you, sir. The prophets look like you. Jeremiah look like you. Ezekiel look like you. Daniel looks like you. Moses look like you. All the prophets, Adam look like you. Right? All the sons of God, Noah, look like you. Right? You need to come back and take, you know, take that pride in the scriptures. In, 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 in just knowing that the God of the Bible is not this. Who we catch hell from on the earth? Who throws us into prisons? Who has the most prison complex set up across the earth? Whose laws offend God? Whose laws change everything in the earth? Get me Isaiah 24 and I think verse 5. Right? Who laws, whose laws oppress the earth? Crush the earth. Right? That's what God says. Isaiah 24 and 5, more please. Isaiah 24 and verse 5. Read. The earth also Listen. is defiled under the inhabitations thereof. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. The earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Read. Because they have transgressed the laws. God says they have what? Transgressed the laws. They have broken his laws. Right? The earth is defiled because God's laws aren't been kept. And because of that, God is going to send missiles, horrible stars, nuclear weapon. That is what's coming to this earth. Nuclear fire. Right? A judgment, a lake of fire is coming to bring recompense upon this earth. And if you don't come back to God as being the children of Israel in the diaspora, you will face that lake of fire. You will be thrown into the lake of fire. God is going to kill you out. Right, because you refuse to hearken to God. Watch this, read. The earth, Isaiah 24 and verse 5. Come on. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitations thereof. Under the inhabitants thereof. Read. Because they have transgressed the laws. They have transgressed God's laws. Right, they've given you Christmas. You no longer want to keep Passover. You said to hell with Pentecost. 
to hell with the new moons. Right? You don't no longer want God's Sabbath. You want Sunday worship, right? Read. Change the ordinance. They've changed the ordinance, sir. Have you ever heard of the feast days? God's holy days? Have you ever heard of Christmas? Heard of Easter? And let me just show you something. Don't let me forget the scripture. Go to Leviticus 23 and 1. Because God has holy days that we should be keeping and following. You understand? This world that gives you all these made up holidays. Easter, that is really worshiping Ishtar. You ever hear of Ishtar? Diana, the goddess Diana? Diana of the Ephesians. You ever see a Hollywood film with um, Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman is Diana. Wonder Woman is that idolatrous whore from the scriptures. Diana of the Ephesians. She's Saramashes. She's the queen of heaven. You understand? All of that is in the Bible. Let me show you something. Let me, uh, let me go 23 and 1. Read. 23 and 1. We're showing everybody God's holy days. Because not many people know that God has holy days in the Bible that you should be following. Not Eastern Christmas and Sunday worship. Watch this family. Read. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, God speak unto Moses, saying what? Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the Jamaicans, unto the Benjamites. Speak unto who? Speak unto the Grenadians. Speak unto the Barbadians. Speak unto the diasporans of the slave trade. Read. And say unto them. And say unto the Israelites, come on. Concerning the feast of the Lord. God has feast days in the Bible. And guess what? Christmas is condemned. Easter is condemned. Read. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Holy gatherings, holy assemblies. God's holy days, you're meant to gather, you're meant to fellowship. Read. Even these are my feasts. Even these are what? My feasts. Even these are my feasts. God has his feast days in the Bible. Leviticus 23, read. Verse 3. Come on. Six, six days shall work be done. The six days, the seventh day, seventh. Today is the seventh day, the seventh day. There is no buying on the Sabbath. There is no selling on the Sabbath. We don't worship on a Sunday. Because that's worshiping the S-U-N. That's worshiping Caesar of That's worshiping Rome. That's worshiping Edom. That's worshiping the devil. Right? We need to come back to the Sabbath. Read. Six days shall work be done. Come on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. The seventh day is the Sabbath. The seventh day is today. Seven days in the week. Sunday is the first day of the week. Not the seventh day. Sunday is the first day. The word Sunday comes from what? The, the word sun. Monday comes from the moon. Moon day. Tuesday is the worship of the God. Tu, T-I-U. A Roman God. Wednesday is the God Woden. Right? Thursday is the God Thor. You see him in Hollywood film with his hammer. That's Thor. Friday is the God free, and Saturday is Saturn, right? And Sunday is the sun. That is where those customs are coming from. It is not from the Holy Scriptures. That's what God is saying. Watch this, read. Six days shall be work be done. Six days work must be done. Do all your preparation. Do all your cooking, right? Before the Sabbath, on your preparation day. Season your meat. Go buy your food in the sixth day. Work for this world for the sixth day. But on the seventh day, on the Sabbath, read. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Is the what? The Sabbath of rest. Is the what? The Sabbath of rest. Rest doesn't mean take a sleep in your bed. Rest means to cease, to stop, sir. Stop from working on the seventh day. Stop from buying and selling. Right? Do all them labor. Cease from that. That's what rest means. Rest means Shabbat. 